Morning, everybody. A little frosty out here this morning. We had a fog overnight, and that's what happens. So we're getting a bunch of work done to the house right now. Yeah, we have our friends from Brown's Plumbing and Heating over right now. And they're installing a new high efficiency furnace, a new hot water tank, and a new air conditioner. But the air conditioner is actually going in next week. There's no real rush for that, as you can tell. They're going to do that next week. But uh, we got it all on a deal, so we bought it all together. Our furnace was over 30 years old and was long past its life expectancy. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with the, uh, the motherboard in there as well. It was a little bit of a short, nothing life-threatening or anything, but it was an issue that needed to be resolved. And we decided it's a pretty old furnace. We better replace it. So the furnace we got now is a two-stage high-efficiency furnace. It's going to have uh, a 26% better efficiency. So our gas bill should go down 26%, up to 26%. So they're working in the basement on that right now. Uh, we got the new hot water tank installed as well right away because our hot water tank was also over 30 years old. They have a life expectancy of what, like 15 years, 10 years, 10, 15 years? We got that replaced all at the same time. So now this house is going to be good to go for the next oh, 20 years. The furnace will be good for like 20, 25 years. And uh, the hot water tank, like I said, 10, 15 years. And then we'll have the AC installed so it'll be ready to go in spring. Now we're in the back here. I believe we're going to install our AC. Oh, right where the blue garbage can is. Right now we have it installed. Uh, the, the current AC is on the other side of the house there, outside the fence. And all of the lines for it are running up in the roof of the basement, which is all plastered in with drywall. And you'd have to rip out the drywall or cut out the drywall to get to the lines. So what we did was we just did a delete on that air conditioner over there. We're going to remove it clamp off the lines, uh, close everything up, seal it up. And then we're gonna, cause this is our furnace room and our laundry room right down here with that little window. We have the lines coming out right here. I'm gonna have them go underneath the door here to there. And I'm gonna build like a little step here to cover them up so that we don't accidentally kick it when we come in and out of the door. We were gonna put it right in this area here, but there's already quite a bit going on here. You can see those white pipes over there. Uh, those are the new intake and exhaust. The old furnace, which wasn't high efficiency, went up through the chimney there. Now you can see there's still emission, or you can still see that there's some exhaust coming out of there now. That's because the hot water tank will still use the chimney. They have the new hot water tank installed and it's heating up the water right now, and that's what you're seeing. The new high efficiency furnace, this is how they do it. They come out the side of the house here. Now the intake, and the exhaust right there. They're gonna clean that up yet. Yeah. Not quite done. And then the air conditioner, the lines will come out of the house somewhere around here. And we couldn't put it here because of these two exhaust vents there. One's for the, the stove hood exhaust, one's for the uh, dryer. And then you got your water lines over there. We don't want the AC right beside the, the deck there either. So, probably run the lines. I'll put it somewhere over here. We'll have brand new AC so that when spring hits and the sun decides to come up a little higher, warm us up a bit, we'll keep ourselves nice and cool. What do you guys think? Chevy? Diesel? They heard something. I think you're your dog over there, man. Probably. Now we're on the side of the yard here, on the side of the house. This is where our old air conditioner is. Show you some here, real quick. It's pretty old. Get this cover off here. So that's the unit, and that's original, as far as we know. That's about 30 years old. So this guy's gonna be going. They're busy working down there. I'm just staying out of their way. So now the big reveal. I'm excited. <laughs> I've already seen it. I'm gonna show you guys. I don't know. 
I know I'm old now because I get excited about getting a new furnace and hot water tank installed. So here it is. Let me turn you around here. It's a Lennox installed by Browns Plumbing and Heating. We get all of our work done through them. They're phenomenal, amazing, highly recommend them. If you're in the area and you don't know who to do your plumbing, heating, anything like that, give them a call. Uh, we've gone through them for years now and they've always been on point. You know, we got everything inspected after we moved in here and the inspection didn't go that great. It was Browns that came in and did the inspection. We're on their NVP program where we pay a monthly fee and then they come out uh, and inspect your furnace once a year, inspect your plumbing once a year, and uh, inspect your air conditioning once a year for free. And uh, they do all of your plumbing as well too. So they came out and did the inspection. As soon as we move in here, we booked an appointment with them. They came and they checked out that furnace. Remember I showed you that furnace in there? That thing was built in 1991. Installed in this house in 1994. So it was over 30 years old. It was past its life expectancy. And the fan in there, it sounded like a jet engine when it started up because it was taking so much energy. It just didn't want to turn over the fan anymore. And there was also a problem with our circuit board in there as well, where uh, it could become a safety issue if it evolves into anything further. So we, uh, we got them to check out everything else. The hot water tank that was in here before as well. Also original, 30 years old. How many of you have heard of a hot water tank lasting 30 years? Our, uh, our last hot water tank that was in here was 30 years old. So that was great, that needed to be replaced. The inside of it was all gummed up. Uh, they flushed it out for us during that inspection, uh, it, which improved it a lot, but they could tell that it was, <laughs> they didn't know how it was still working. So uh, that was, that needed to be replaced. And as well, I showed you our air conditioner outside, also 30 years old and needs to be replaced. So we got it all done, all in one shebang, and we saved a lot of money by doing that. We saved about $3,500 by doing it all at once and here we are so this house is practically brand new now uh i mean it's still very well put together the structure and the frame and the bones of the house is practically like brand new right you don't gotta worry about that and now we have the furnace that's brand new it's a high efficiency two-stage furnace so it uh it has two levels depending on how much power it needs so it's supposed to save us power that way it's also a high efficiency furnace. Remember I showed you that last furnace and it vented the exhaust out the chimney. I think I explained this to you earlier in the vlog. It used to go out here, right? Now, just the hot water tank goes out here and they put a sleeve up there all the way up to the top of the chimney to ensure nothing leaks at all. Uh, the furnace, however, no longer goes up the chimney. This is a high efficiency one, so this one's a little different. It has the intake right here and the Exhaust there, goes around here, up there, and out the side of the house. I think I also explained this to you before. Sorry, I'm trying to remember what I already told you. So everything in here is good to go, brand new. We're gonna have to move the location of the air conditioner like I was saying, because th these are the lines for the old air conditioner here, right? They come around here, they go up here, and then they go through here and into the drywalled ceiling of the basement. So I don't know about you guys, but if you are building a house in the near future and you're gonna build a basement, don't drywall the ceiling of the basement. Okay, take it from Trucker Josh, it's a pain. I haven't had the biggest pain yet because we haven't had any big problems other than this, but if you drywall the ceiling of the basement, imagine all of this, like all of these pipes and everything, all of that is in there, in the whole basement. And if you need to access any of it, you gotta actually cut out the drywall and re-drywall it. It's a big, big pain. If you're doing a basement, put tile ceiling in the basement. Way easier to access stuff. But anyways, because this goes through the drywall, we can't get to it. Unless we rip all the drywall out, we don't wanna do that. And then you gotta get paint matched and paint everything, redo it. They would take care of it. Browns would take care of all of this for us, but we don't want to go that route. So what they're going to do is they're going to seal it off on the other end of the house. Cut it off, seal it off. Just leave that in there. The new air conditioner is going to come out of the same area here. But instead of going 
all the way down to the other end of the house, like way out over there. It's just gonna zip and go right outside the house right here. And then that way the air conditioner will be there. The garage is just over here, right? So it'll just be over there. Way shorter, way easier to uh, keep, keep track of and easier to maintain as well if anything ever goes wrong. Easier to get at. Because what if something went wrong with one of these lines in there, right? Again, we'd have to rip out the whole drywall ceiling. And the whole basement is like that. It's all drywall. Right? Even in here. So, don't get me wrong, I really like the look of the drywall. We didn't do that, we bought the house like this. I, I think it looks great. I'm glad they did it for the looks. I'm not complaining about it at all. But when you do come into circumstances like this, where you need to access all of the lines and the pipes and anything else that's up there, it's tile ceiling's the way to go. Remove the tiles and get up there. But anyway, so that's, that was our uh, endeavor. It was pretty expensive. Yes, it was. If you're wondering, yes. <laughs> yes, it was expensive. But the only thing we have in here now that hasn't been replaced, that might need replacing in the next 15, 15 years, is the water softener system. But that one's still doing pretty good. And I don't think we'll need to replace that anytime soon. But that is the oldest thing in our house right now. <laughs> Check this thing out. Brand new hot water tank. See, they got all the gas lines going up here. Gas shut off. That is code now to have that here. And up there, you got the little gooseneck up there. The drain. The exhaust they completely redid. Goes around the same route as the other one. And this furnace is in the same spot as the other one. Comes up. This is all new up to here. And this is where they connected the new to the old. And that's the old ducting there. Lennox is a great brand. We went uh, with a Lennox air conditioner as well. But the air conditioner is just a one stage. Remember at our old house, we had that super, super fancy air conditioner. We bought a variable speed air conditioner there. It cost us a lot of money. We, we wanted the best and we got the best. We, we didn't need it. We shouldn't have spent that money, but we did. That air conditioner alone was more expensive than this furnace and that air conditioner combined. But we did get that deal because we bought both or all three at the same time, right? So, it's hard to tell. This is an expense that should only come up about every 20, 25 years. So it should be good until about 2050. Now it's 2023, the end of 2023 right now. And close to 2050 probably is when we'll be good till. The hot water tank might need to be replaced before that, but the rest of it, hopefully anyways. So that's my big show and tell. Woo. I'm an adult now, these things excite me. I should uh, find out what that model number is because you guys probably want to know the model of that furnace. I'm sorry, I don't have it right now. And uh, we're waiting on the paperwork, all the invoices to be finalized because this just got done. But if you want to know, I can share it in a future vlog. Two-stage furnace, that's all I know. That was all I really had to show you today, guys. I'm still waiting uh, to go back on the road. Um, and I'm enjoying my time at home. So we got a couple more things to do. I got to do some work to Old Blue in the shop yet. Needs a little bit more work done to it. We'll do that tomorrow. And then we'll be packing our bags, loading her up, and headed down to Texas. I, I got word back from my friend who works, uh, who drives down to Texas every now and then. You know him, Moses. I met him on the road a couple of months ago. He drives to Texas every now and then. And he confirmed what I thought. He's like, yeah, don't sleep anywhere near the border. Don't go, like, when you gotta go down to Laredo and you gotta go that close to Mexico, the, the goal, what you do is you stay several hundred miles away for night into the US, and then when you have to deliver, all you do is you go down there to be on time, you get in, you get out. Get in there, drop your freight, get out. He said, don't stay there. My delivery's gonna be uh, later in the evening too, we'll talk about this more in the future, but uh, uh, I won't be staying anywhere around there. <laughs> Went down to Laredo, Texas, so 
you'll hear more about that because I'm excited. Thanks for joining me anyways, guys, for my little show and tell. I'm sorry I don't got more to show you, but I'm on holiday, okay? So if you want to, my honest opinion, you're lucky you're getting any vlog. <laughs> I just love doing this so much. Take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.